Dice and Talk podcast. I'm Nick Mercer. Before I talk to Zinc Think CCO Chief Clinical Officer Scott Anderson, I would like to thank my sponsor, HeadCheck Health. Concussion Talk podcast is presented by HeadCheck Health. HeadCheck Health bridges the gaps in concussion care through simple, powerful technology. To our organizations like the Canadian Football League, Track Factory Racing, the Canadian Junior Hockey League, Eastern Washington University, and Volleyball Canada, who rely on HeadCheck Health to improve communication and optimize care. Visit HeadCheckHealth.com for more. Yeah, hi, Scott. Thanks, Jan, for, for being on this podcast, and uh, nice to see you again. Welcome back. And uh, can you please, for people who have not listened to the past to the other two podcasts on here, uh, can you reintroduce yourself and tell us what Think Think is? Because you're here to actually... Oh, sorry. Good. Yeah, sure. Yeah, my name is Scott Anderson. I'm the Chief Clinical Officer at Sync Think, and uh, Sync Think is a, a, a next generation neurotechnology startup in Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. And uh, um, we deliver a brain health platform that specializes in assessing real time cognitive function, uh, delivering therapies to remedy deficits, uh, cognitive deficits, and um, provide um, performance. Uh, training platforms to uh, improve uh, cognitive performance. Great, and so we talked about last time around. Well, last time around, last time around for same thing, episode forty-five. If you want to go back and listen, but uh, today we're going to talk about your high-sync platform, the first mobile rapid test for concussion, and uh, just received the second FDA approval. I'm not sure how many approvals needs to go into full commercialization, commercialization but. Uh, because I'm, I'm not in the U.S. and I don't to make a, I don't make FDA needed doesn't need to prove anything I make. I don't make anything except for my guess. But uh, anyway, so can you just please tell us what this new platform is? I think for the first mobile rapid test for concussion. Yeah, so we've uh, we've atta- obtained a, a new uh, indication for our iSync platform. Uh, the first one we received in 2016. Um, that specialized or that allowed us to commercialize um, iSync um, to look at conditions that uh, where abnormal eye movement is is present. And so there's a if you look at the literature, there's a whole host of neurological conditions that have uh, biomarkers at indications of pathology or disease associated with them, some chronic and some uh, acute and some developmental and some degenerative. So, you know, it's there's quite a lot to to um, to study in that regard. Um, this latest um, uh, approval from the FDA or clearance from the FDA, I should say, is, um, you know, really, I think, uh, a big step forward for um, users of our technology for concussion specifically. And, um, you know, concussion is a, a very difficult condition to properly diagnose and to get patients the correct treatment for. And, um, you know, one of the things that we've been working with the US FDA on for a long time is uh, being able to provide, you know, a, a mobile rapid test that utilizes um, artificial intelligence to provide an indication, a yes or no indication of, of concussion. And so that's our latest approval is that we're now the first uh, rapid and mobile test for concussion, but we also are the first um, technology that can provide both a binary yes or no uh, uh, of concussion after a 60 second assessment. So uh, it's quite an exciting time for, uh, moving the, the the field forward and also to um, provide you know next generation tools and technology platforms for um, clinicians and you know I think it's significant also because many clinicians in this space ha- have not adopted technology for uh, the assessment of concussion and we hope that this you know um, helps facilitate and and uh, allows clinicians to understand that there are technology that can improve patients' outcomes. Uh, patient outcomes and, um, you know, support the decision-making process of the clinician to make it easier for them to get patients the right care. Yeah, no, I think, I think this is exciting because it's also encourages, encourages, like you say, encourages clinicians to actually use technology, not just for, you know, MRIs and CT scans, but for diagnostic abilities for other conditions, which, which right now MRI CT scans can't detect conditions. So, you know, and yeah, and I, big. yeah, I just want to add too that I think what's important about this is that 
historically this condition has been subjectively diagnosed. So many clinicians still to this day are making decisions based on the way the patient presents and the description of the patient's symptoms. And um, you know, many, many clinicians are holding their, their hat on that. Um, and unfortunately, symptoms don't tell the whole story. And it's important to identify the origin of the symptoms, right? So you know the type of therapy that is appropriate for the patient. And that's the part that I think a lot of us clinicians are falling short is, you know, we're not getting patients to the right um, rehabilitation specialist or to the proper protocols that can resolve these um, these deficits that are occurring, these cognitive deficits that are occurring as a result of concussion, because we're not going a step further and, and trying to um, correlate the symptoms to any type of measurable dysfunction. So, you know, that's um, the hallmark of our system. And, and what iSync has been known for is, you know, providing rapid objective information that can tell you definitively whether or not uh, a patient has the presence of, you know, a particular type of dysfunction after concussion or not. And ultimately, the goal of that is to provide the clinician with the information so that they can decide what to do with the patient and where to send them, right? Because there are probably, you know, seven or eight different types of therapies that patients yeah. with concussion could pursue. Um, but you need to know specifically what the dysfunction is and confirm that's the source of the symptoms before you can make the appropriate referral to the correct therapy. So that's, I think, a, a really important, um, you know, piece of this as well. As it, it leads very really well, you know, I... On digital segue to my next question, because I'm looking at the Sync Think website now under product. If anybody wants to check it out, there's the how I think works, which goes well with what you're saying. So, how is it working with your port syndicate? So, what what you've learned from doing all your research and trials and not well, you know, trials and and uh, patient data you're getting, but how why how I think works the variant sign movement and, and synchronization. So, could you please just touch on that? Sure. Yeah. So our system uses a, an extended reality headset. So we use a you know virtual reality or augmented reality or mixed reality headset um, that the patient wears, and um, we um, attach that headset via Bluetooth connection to a tablet, just like a tablet you would have at your house that you you know shop online uh, and use for. It's the same type of you know tablet, and uh, the clinician drives the assessment battery from the tablet and initiates the, the testing um, to um, you know, assess the visual and vestibular function, uh, which are key critical central brain functions um, you know, that can be disrupted after concussion. And so we use a battery of you know, 60 second assessments that can be done one after another that look at different types of, um, that examine the quality of the different types of eye movements that we use. And what, what a lot of people don't understand or don't realize is that when your eyes are moving or um, centrally fixating, your brain is actually responsible for the movement of the eyes or positioning of the eyes um, because the brain is looking to try to get uh, visual input, right? It wants information from the outside world so it can process what's happening around it. And that's ultimately how we get through the world. We, we use our eyes, the brain uses the eyes to select content that we find uh, desirable and we want to interact with. So um, we're constantly moving our eyes to do that all the time. And this process is actually disrupted during uh, concussion oftentimes. And so it's important to do multiple tests to identify which ones are disrupted and which ones are not, but then ultimately to guide the, the therapy as I mentioned earlier. So, you know, that's essentially how it works. We provide um, uh, a, uh, a stimulus on the screen inside the headset and it comes with some instructions and the patient has to do what the instructions say. And while they're doing something, we have embedded infrared cameras that are built into the headset and the cameras are taking a snapshot of the patient's eyes um, really, really rapidly. And so we get a lot of really robust data. Um, we collect 120 data points per eye per test. Um, and so we can tell um, with very um, you know, robust data capture um, exactly what the eyes are doing and whether or not the eyes are moving abnormally. Um, and oftentimes you can have something called nystagmus, which is an abnormal eye movement or a jerking eye movement. Which I, I think I have actually. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Um, at, you know, after, uh, after a concussion and um, we can categorize the type and severity of that type of abnormal eye movement so that it's clear for physicians um, and other clinicians who want to treat the condition. So your, your, it says that the, for the headline is that it's the first mobile and rapid test. So how's, how, how's a mobile? Like where's, it's a, 
I understand that. It's, it's basically a, a uh, virtual reality type looking headset. And uh, you, really wireless. It can be and taken you, anywhere. And you, and you train people like this. How big is this thing? This is that this test. Yeah, it's uh, so it just, you know, it's a, it's a, yeah, a virtual reality or augmented reality uh, headset, you know, weighs a pound or two, you know, it's very light and easy to put on and uh, simple to utilize. And, um, you know, because it's wireless and completely untethered, it can be taken anywhere and the patient can be tested anywhere. So, um, you know, we've had, you know, military users who have used it in the middle of nowhere. We've had um, sports organizations who use it on the sidelines of games. And we've had um, clinical folks who use it in their practice. And so, um, you know, inside their clinic environment. environment. So, you know, it can be done anywhere. And, um, you know, uh, we find that to be really um, an important part of our product offering is that we've got something that doesn't really have any limitations in terms of where it can be utilized. And, and it's, for, it's for specific clinicians, like for, because you train, you train people, because you, you, you would call it on board, people to, to use this this software this platform so how do you you teach you teach just anybody you teach ats or physios or doctors or yep yeah we treat uh, oh. anybody that's a specialist or um you know has a specialty in the condition you know uh in this case concussion so we deal with um any neurological specialist so um neurologists or um you know, uh, neurooptometrists, um, neurochiropractor, uh, neurophysical therapists, um, you know, athletic trainers, um, sports medicine physicians, um, anybody that really treats uh, concussion patients. You know, we train and certify, and uh, they utilize the system. Um, you know, in the care of their patients. Great. So, uh, as you so as I said, the uh, this is rapid test. I know what you said safety. Tell them like sixty seconds if someone has concussion or not. But um, so it's so hard to some symptoms. Uh, some people can have symptoms delayed, delayed for, for weeks, or sometimes it, or you know, a few days at least. So how is this? How does this affect that? Or does how does how does the delay of symptoms affect the assessment? Sure. Yeah. So you know symptoms change and symptoms progress based on what the patient is doing, and oftentimes, um, to be frank patients are not given the correct instructions for how to manage their condition in the acute stages. And so oftentimes they do things that drive additional symptoms um, without realizing that it's detrimental to their recovery. And so, you know, what most patients experience is that they have, um, you know, sleep disturbance after a concussion, potentially um, they may have symptoms um, that will manifest over time based on what's happening to them in their environment. And so, um, or what's happening around them, you know, so they, um, you know, they, uh, if they're not doing anything to actively rehabilitate or treat the condition, um, they are more susceptible to either um, uh, exacerbating their current symptoms or developing new symptoms. Because you can imagine if they're, um, you know, if they become more, uh, more sleep deprived because they have a sleep disturbance, how more agitated or restless, or um, they may develop headaches, um, you know, those types of things just because they're not recovering well. Um, you know, the other thing can be said about family history. A family history is an, is an extremely important uh, data point in understanding the recovery from concussion because um, what we've learned and what the, the, some of the new evidence is telling us is that uh, uh, families that have, you know, family history of uh, psychological disorders, psychiatric disorders um, or ADHD potentially can manifest in people that have concussion. And so it's important that, you know, those folks also receive the proper psychological care that they need in order to manage the condition. And, and they also may develop other um, sequelae such as depression, anxiety, and other, you know, kind of mood disorders as a result of the concussion. And so, you know, those things can't be taken lightly and, you know, they need uh, proper monitoring and assessment from qualified professionals. And so, you know, my point in all this is saying that uh, no two concussions are the same. Every uh, person that experiences a concussion may have a different type of um, symptom presentation as a result of the injury. And it's important to track those symptoms over time. But if you are steadfast and able to identify the patient uh, symptoms in the acute phase, you're better able to organize a logical and thorough treatment plan after the fact 
uh, after the diagnosis has been made to get them the therapy they need right away. The longer it takes for them to get the therapy, the longer the symptoms will manifest in different ways and shapes. So, um, you know, it's, uh, there, are, there are oftentimes these symptoms are tied to other things that are happening um, during the recovery when the patient's not recovering properly. Exactly. So last year, that kind of lead again leads on to my question about these reports you get that, that the doubt questions will get about severity and that's the therapy that a patient may need. So what does the report say? What the report will, in our report from iSync platform, will that tell you? Will that tell any question? Yeah, so we have this really, these really great kind of customizable and interactive reports that we produce now that um, not only give you objective metrics, so the measurement of the amount of uh, you know, gaze errors that our system captures and what your eyes are doing. So how many times your eyes move in a wrong direction or a wrong way that they, than they should. Um, but we also provide you with a host of visual plots about how the data was captured around all the eye movements that occurred and what those actually mean. And so we're giving guidance to the clinician about how to interpret the data that's been collected and, uh, you know, what the indications for that collection period looks like. Um, to make it easier for them to make a decision about the patient. So that's kind of um, what the reports suggest. And we have different types of reports for different types of assessments and providers. And like I said, all these things are kind of customizable and designed with the clinician's um, experience in mind. And and you, Jerry, I'm, I'm just keep looking at your website now, the same thing, the same thing website. And it's very, it's a, there's a lot of information there about both their advice and it's about the science around it, behind it. So if anyone wants to check it out, sanctthink.com. And uh, there's lots of information about the, that device and and more. So uh, please. And also, uh, so Scott, uh, what's what's next now? Now you have, now you have two FDA approvals. What's next for iSync and for the, uh, for the platform? Yeah, we continue to um, focus on a couple of things. One is we continue to expand our indications. So we're continuing down the regulatory pathway to get additional approvals. Um, we are studying other conditions at this time too as well and working with a host of partners to um, you know, realize the, the efficacy of those types of uh, interactions. And um, we're, you know, more importantly, I think we've gotten to a place now where we are completely hardware agnostic. So we can work on a, on a number of different virtual and augmented reality systems. And so, you know, over the course of probably the next six months, you'll see us um, deploy our solutions on um, different form factors with different capabilities for each, um, for a host of different types of conditions. So, so yeah, who, does anyone have this technology now? Do you, your I guess prototypes or your immediately oh, yeah. sold it since? Oh yeah, we're, we're a commercial company. We've been a uh, commercial company for about three years. And um, we have uh, over 3,500 clinicians using our platform today, um, largely in the US and Canada, some you know outside of those uh, walls as well. Um, and we've got um, you know, a, a mix between healthcare providers in you know, hospital and clinical environments, to sports organizations, to um, you know, folks in uh, either you know, research capacities for drug development or other associated conditions. Um, and the military, of course, which is kind of a longstanding user of our technology. Right, right. We were talking about that before. So uh, I think mean, this is very exciting. And now it's very new because this announcement was just made in early October that you received the second round of, of uh, support from the FDA. So uh, St. Clair, so brutal. So, uh, so yeah, so, so I guess we'll do, hopefully we'll see, we'll see this now in more, uh, this is, as improves in some more places around, around, the, around the world, around at least North America, let's say. So, uh, yeah, so, so thank you so much for being on the show and for telling everyone all about this new, new exciting technology. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, cheers. Cheers. Music at the beginning of this podcast is by Ben Sound, www.bensound.com.